Hello everybody. I wanted to come out and talk today about some of these hard shell gourds that I use to build gourd banjos with. Um, over the years people are always asking me questions. Do you grow your own gourds? Do you buy them? Where do you buy them? And so forth. Anyhow, if, if you're not able to grow them, I understand it's, it's challenging to grow them. Go ahead and purchase them on the internet. You can find them if you have Amish people in your area. They tend to grow them and sell them and you can find them on the internet and stuff too. The variety that I like to use is called a Martin Gourd, M-A-R-T-I-N, or just a birdhouse gourd. And they call them that, that because this is the variety that the Indians used here in North America to as uh, purple martin birdhouses for presumably for thousands of years before Europeans showed up. So I don't know what type of uh, gourds were used to build banjos historically, um, but Looking at the, uh, some of the early pictures and some of the early examples, it appears that it's a, it's a purple martin gourd, a birdhouse gourd like these. So that's the only variety that I grow and the only variety that I use to build banjos. Okay, let's talk about uh, site selection real quick. If you are going to grow them yourself, get some, get some martin birdhouse hard shell gourd seeds. Ideally, you want a slight slope to your bed because you don't want any standing water to sit here and cause rot. You want the, the, your bed to drain. You can also see, if you look behind me, look at all the vegetation. There's a ton of vegetation for just a relatively small amount of gourds. Now that tells you that you're going to need a, a lot of space to, if you're going to get, because a lot of this is just going to be vegetation and vines, and it's not going to, you know, you're not going to get that many gourds per square foot. You need a lot of space. So you want a gently sloping bed, you want a big bed. Me here, I'm lucky enough that my entire property here where I live is a, is a south-facing slope that's relatively gentle through this portion. So south-facing is important too to get maximum sunlight and stuff during your growth season. Okay, the other thing to look for is you'll notice a lot of this vegetation. You see how it's dry and it's starting to curl up? That is an easy visual indicator that your gourds, at least some of your gourds, are ready to harvest. We'll talk about that too. So um, you don't want these to sit out here too long. We've already had some light frost this year. And any of these hard shell gourds, you see they have the white flowers. You can probably see some white flowers. It's got a white flower on it. That tells you it can take a little bit of frost without starting to rot. But if it has uh, several consecutive days of, of frost, they are going to start to rot and it's going to weaken the shell. You don't want that. You want these things to be hard and woody. And I think this one right up here is mature enough to where I could harvest it. There's a few more back in here that I'm going to let go. Tonight we're going to have some rain, but the low is only going to be 50 and then we have lots of warm weather after that. Um, but then it is going to freeze again, and so I'm going to harvest all the rest of these probably over the next week or so. But this one right here is pretty good. Um, what I'll do is, well, I'll go ahead and cut it. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Look at this gourd. So what I did was I, I made sure to cut it to where it's got plenty of stem here. You don't want to just break the stem off at the where it meets the fruit. You don't want a short. You want a nice long stem for it. Okay. The other thing I did that, that helped me select this gourd was an old timer told me this trick. You take you take the sharp edge of your thumbnail and you press it into the flesh. And if you see, it's making a little bit of mark, but it's it's a t you could you could kind of tell that it's tough. Once the skin gets tough like this, you can go ahead and harvest them. Um, since I cut this one, I'm going to go ahead and keep this one and start drying it. The rest of these I'm going to leave overnight. Like I said, it's going to rain and then it's going to be real dry again. And then it'd be time to harvest them because I think the week after this coming week, we're going to start getting a lot of frost. And as I said, that's going to kill these. Okay. Um, now how to actually cure this. It's, it's, a, it's a fairly lengthy process. I'd say it requires at least a whole you know at least a whole season right so that's several months over winter um and i you're they're not going to really be ready by spring and probably not until peak summer of the year after you harvest them at the earliest i think ideally i'd probably let them cure for a solid 12 months so for me that would mean i'm not going to be able to 
well, let's say 10 to 12 months would probably be ideal curing. And even longer is better. I mean, you're not going to hurt them to cure any longer. Hang them up if you can. I don't know. It's awful heavy right now, and this stem is, is real tender. So if you hang it up by that stem right now, it's going to break. I set up some kind of racks where they can get some air circulation underneath them and set it up on your porch where the sun's not beating down on it all day and, and where the effects of the freezing and thawing are, are going to be lessened because it's up against, it's close to the house and sheltered. And it's going to take about, about uh, well, we already talked about that. It's going to take a long time. Anyhow, that's probably all, that's about all we need to, we need to know. I can show you. Let's take a look at some of the other stuff I got. You see these here. Here's another, another big one. 